Good Monday makers, it's time for their build roundup, and in this week's episode, we're going to be checking out a van bunk bed, a cart corral, a karaoke stand, a golf ball window guard, and a UTV boom arm sprayer. All kinds of cool builds. Let's jump right in and check them out. First up is this bunk bed from Udo or UDO underscore vans on Instagram, and uh, they shared this reel last week, which is really cool. They built a triple bunk bed. They had 24 hours to make it. Uh, it was for a band, apparently, that was going to be sleeping in this van and traveling. And so they made this van out of conduit and maker pipe, which is really cool. Here you can see they've got the, the main construction, and it looks like it's going to be taken up about the, the back half of the van. And there's some seats in the middle up there, I'd imagine, so people can ride, of course, and everything while they're traveling around. But it looks like there's six verticals and just a, a standard kind of rectangular frame with four-way connectors and 90-degree connectors. They're using a power saw for the cutting conduit just to make it faster. And then here you can see they're adding some slats. And as he's moving around up there, you can see it's really strong. It's working out great. And they're adding the, the wooden slats in there, which is a good idea uh, for the, you know, the actual platforms that are going to hold the mattresses. And then there it is in place with the mattresses on top. And it's technically a triple bunk bed because somebody, or I think two per bed. And at the very bottom, they'll be able to kind of lay on the mattress that's on the floor of the van. And they got the middle bunk with maker pipe and then of course the top bunk and it looks fantastic and they did the build in under 24 hours which is really cool and you can see there where they use the adjustable angle flange to secure the bottom of the bed to the wheel well which is really cool awesome build check them out on instagram again it's at udo underscore vans super cool thanks for sharing that next up is this cart corral from steve and this is really awesome i think this is the first buggy or cart corral that we've ever seen and you know if you go to stores uh, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, anywhere really, you're going to see a cart corral. And apparently this was a Habitat for Humanity store and they needed a cart corral. And so they use one inch empty conduit, as you can see. And here it is with the buggies in place. They've got two different sizes, which is pretty common. Uh, you know, when you go to the store, there's usually different ones. And basically it's just a simple, simple rectangle, you know, it's open so you can get the carts in and out. And they use one inch empty conduit. It looks like 90 degree connectors on this side to kind of cube the shape back here. Looks like four-way connectors, I believe, there in the middle. And then they use T-connectors on the other end to kind of end the conduit run. And then they used a really interesting technique, which is the flange that's made for three-quarter inch empty conduit, the one that we make. It actually does work with one inch empty conduit. The way it's designed, it just you know clamps around it as two pieces. You just need a longer bolt. The bolts that come with the flange are 25 millimeters and you'll just want to get something that's at least 30 millimeters in length. And you'll need two of them, and it's M6 by one if you want to use the nuts that we provide with the flange. But you can actually use it with one inch EMT conduit. Works the same way as it does with three quarter inch. Like I said, you just need those longer bolts. So that was really cool to see them incorporate that, and they bolted it to the floor. You can imagine this is going to be getting hit by carts, and kids are probably going to be hanging on it and stuff like that. So got to make sure it's really strong and safe. So that was uh, good that they bolted that to the floor and it just looks really cool. Like I said, I think it's the first cart corral that we've seen. So thanks so much, Steve, for sharing that. Really awesome to see. Next up is another first, I think. I don't remember seeing any more karaoke stands. If there have been, I apologize. But nonetheless, this is an awesome build. It's a karaoke stand. They wanted to put a bunch of different things on one stand. So they made it with conduit and connectors. As you can see here, it's got the speaker built in. It's got the screen with the lyrics on it. It's also got a uh, phone stand. So if somebody wants to record themselves, you know, singing and everything, then they can put their phone up there and record. And it's got the cables routed along it and just a nice compact stand to get all of this stuff in one place. And it'll be, you know, easier to move around instead of trying to set up everything individually. They can just carry the stand over and put it in place and have it all set up. And it's really awesome. Looks like just a sled kind of design, just another cube shape really with uh, 90 degree connectors. And then they slanted this part with 45 degree connectors, as you can see there. And it looks like they covered the, the pipes with the black shrink wrap or they painted it. And then they use silver connectors, which has a cool contrast and everything just looks awesome. And here, I think they're just showing the, the rest of the equipment set up on the table. And uh, yeah, super cool build. Like I said, first time I think I've remember seeing a karaoke stand and it's just super awesome. So thanks so much for sharing that, Dan. Really cool build. Next up is a build from Allen, and this is another really cool one. And oftentimes when you DIY something, it's because you need something custom and unique. And this build is a perfect example of that because Allen and Barbara needed a protector or a guard for the windows, as you can see here on the front of their house, 
because they live near a golf course and people like me that aren't very good at golf, when they hit the ball and it comes flying towards their house, it would hit the glass and break the glass. And I think even that might be what happened there. I'm not entirely sure. But here's the before picture. And then they're actually local to us, which is cool. They actually came by and picked up some minis and brainstormed with Kelly, who is one of the owners. And they came up with this design, which is basically just a 2D kind of rectangular frame that's going to guard the windows on the front. They modeled it out, and I love this. This is a, a good idea to put the mini build on something uh, like this poster board or this cardstock here, and then you know write some different things on it, label the connectors, and put some measurements, and kind of you know plan the design even more than just modeling it. And then they kind of took that, and I think there's a sketch here. Yeah, you can see here's a sketch of what the frame's going to look like, and the kind of the schematic with the EMT and everything like that. And then they use squares uh, to kind of simulate the connectors. And then here it is in place. And just like the, the schematic and the plan, they use the conduit and connectors to build it. And here it is. It looks awesome on the front of their house. And I think we get some close-up pictures here. Yeah, here it is from the side looking towards the west. And you can see here it's bolted to the ceiling uh, or to the kind of bottom of the, the roof eave here. And they used a flange connector for that and a telescoping clamp. And then it goes down and there's a flange at the base. And I think he was planning to bolt it into the concrete, but he said he was pretty happy with how rigid it was without doing that. So he just left them. I think they're just kind of acting as a foot, if I'm correct. And then it's bolted at the top, of course. And then here you can see the other side of it. Look in the other direction. Looks fantastic. And then here's a close-up of the flange. And we can see some more details. They've got this screen material secured to the framework using nylon zip ties. And here is the screen they used. It's five foot. You get a 25 foot roll. It's by this company, Metro Screenworks. And it's stainless steel mesh screen, which makes sense. You know, you don't want to put something like sunshade material or something because a golf ball could easily, you know, go through that over time. Uh, or, you know, just it might have enough give that when the ball hits it, it still goes and hits the glass. So they wanted to make sure it was super strong and rigid. So they used the stainless steel mesh. And it looks like a great solution secured to the frame. You can also see here they painted the pipes. Looks like a nice tan color to match the side of the house, which is a good idea. And then here's a close-up also of the, the flange bolted. Actually, I don't think the flange is bolted to the ceiling. Or maybe, maybe it is, but maybe just not in this picture. Um, but the telescoping clamp, they're using that with half-inch EMT, I think to just kind of imagine like, you know, a shower curtain rod going across and you kind of extend it and then twist it to tighten it in place. I think that's how they're using it. They use a telescoping clamp to kind of extend the pole and then, you know, get it, kind of squeeze it in between the, the concrete driveway and the, the bottom of the roof eave here. And then um, that's secured that way. And then they also use T-connectors as spacers. Uh, again, you know, like I said, if a you know, ball's coming in, you don't want it to have enough give in the screen that it still ends up hitting the screen or the window. So they use T-connectors as a spacer and just a short piece, I think, there might be a short piece of conduit in there with an end cap, or maybe it's just the T-connector closed up with a T-connector pushed into the end of the connector. Not entirely sure, but um, either way, that, that looks like a good solution for a spacer. Here's a close-up of the bottom flange. And here you can see, I think uh, there was a little bit where it was kind of bowing out a little bit, I think. Uh, and so they used a T-connector to kind of clamp onto the siding a little bit just to provide a little bit more stability and uh, also secure the middle of the frame. And here's a close-up of the gloves. I think he said the, the connectors and conduit were fine to work with, but the, the mesh screen was uh, cutting up his hands, even though he was using gloves. And as you can see, it's, it's ripping those to shreds. But really cool build. Like I said, a unique situation, which is often what people have to turn to a DIY project. And they did a really awesome job. It was great to meet them in person. And it's such a cool build with a lot of great techniques and things inside of it. And you can check out the post in the community. There's a lot of great details that Alan shared, which we really appreciate. So thanks for uh, thanks for coming by and, and also sharing your, your after build photos. Really awesome to see. Next up is a build from Stafford. And this is another really cool build. This is a boom arm sprayer, I think a yard sprayer, that they made for their UTV. And it's super cool. You can see here, here it is kind of deployed and it's got the, the arms going out. And then here in this picture, you can see it goes up. And I don't know if this is just for storage or if this increases the, the radius that you can reach with the, the spray that you're putting out. Don't entirely know, uh, but nonetheless, it's really awesome. And I think they're achieving this with adjustable angle connectors 
that can slide up and down this pipe, they either undo them completely and slide them out, or it's very similar to what we saw with uh, Jason's element. We called it like a Murphy bed, where the hinge, adjustable angle hinge connector was loose. So whenever he put the bed down, it would allow the, the puzzle piece part of the adjustable angle to hinge or slide up and down the pipe, which would allow the whole frame to hinge, which is a really good technique. We should do a video on that. Um, and I think maybe that's what he's doing here. Not entirely sure, but it also looks like there is some clamps holding down the hoses and some zip ties, uh, which is holding the hose to the pipe. And we don't really get a close up of everything, but it looks like a piece of conduit attached to the UTV, the vertical going up with a T connector there. And I think there's an adjustable 180 connector in the middle for the arm that allows it to move up and down. And then it looks like the hinge here is basically just uh, that horizontal piece of conduit. There's a piece of conduit on the outside of it, and I think there's just a bolt going through both pieces, if I'm not mistaken. And then, like I said, the puzzle piece clamp, I think, slides up and down this pipe to allow it to hinge. You could also just re completely remove the connector uh, if you want to do it that way. You could just use like the quick clamp or something. Or actually, you could use the quick clamp to just allow it to hinge. So you could just tighten it down to tighten it in place whenever it's up here and then loosen the quick clamp to allow the puzzle piece to slide. I have to test that. I think that would work just fine, which would be really cool. Uh, but this is just a, an awesome build, really unique situation again, um, but a, a cool build and uh, just some really great things incorporated into this. And uh, if you want to share more details about it, Stafford, love to know different things about the, the hinge and everything like that. So if you're watching, definitely would love to hear more details. But that's all the builds I have for you this week. Hope you guys enjoyed checking them out as much as I did. As always, they're all going to be linked down below if you want to look at any of them in more detail for yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.